And here we are on Friday morning once more. It's a bit cloudy outside, but the cloud will part as we head to Donegal, where the sun is shining within Pat McGart's heart, if not outside his window. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Jude. Good morning to you. I'm glad man. you put it like that because the sun sure is it's shining outside. You are my sunshine. Sunshine. My only sunshine. Uh, yeah. Uh, God, you, you can see why you, neither of us had a stage crew. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how are things there? Uh, grand, Jude. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 let's be honest. Uh, with a, <laughs> this COVID is certainly dragging on a bit, you know. Oh, uh, I think I'm starting to get ca cabin fever. The number of deaths, well, whatever with the dragging on, I don't find it dragging at all, but I got very scary, scared every night I look and see the figures for well, deaths. The figures are unbelievable. Right. I think, I think we're paying the price now for the Christmas get oh, Of course, of course. Yeah. And I mean, who were the bloody asses that encouraged that, you know, yeah. uh, that said all oh, the people need a break? Daft, daft, nah. daft, daft. Okay, nah, Let, let's go to the, the topics, Pat, that we have uh, lined up for today. I'll keep my eye on the clock too, just so I know yeah. what I'm doing. Uh, the first item, uh, and you've suggested it, and I suppose it's a pretty obvious one, and it's in all the papers and on the TV as well, um, is the mother and baby homes, um, co not controversy, but scandal, yeah. really. Um, yeah. Do you want to give us your thoughts on it, Pat, and then I'll tell you what I think. Uh, no, that's, it's just a, uh, our long history. It's, it's been an unbelievable history, Jude. Uh, it's one of cruelty and lack of compassion. This is just the latest report in a long list of court, uh, reports about sexual abuse, um, child abuse, um, abuse of unmarried mothers. You know, and Judith, uh, you know, it's, it's got almost a Taliban feel about it. You know, that uh, the repression in Irish society. And, uh, and anyway, the, anyway let's, I could keep going, but I'd be boring myself. Um, Jude, no, that, well, the one thing that I thought was, well, I thought Michael Martin tried to do a sort of sleight of hand politically, if you'll pardon that mixed metaphor. He uh, he actually said it was uh, it was society would to blame. You know, in other words, uh, I thought, wait a minute, what does he mean society? In other words, he's shifting. It wasn't the church and it wasn't the politicians. It was society. And that I and mean, when you when you think about that for a minute, so everybody's to blame and nobody's to blame. No, it was just the time it was in it. And I'm going, no, 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 hold on, you know. I the, the dominant uh, group in Ireland, uh, Catholic Ireland, was the church by some considerable distance, and the church set the tone for the moral uh, outrage at that time, and they called the shots, and there was very little doubt. Politicians were in there, of course, they were, and so the church and the state uh, operated the, pretty much uh, the key roles in Irish society. But the church pretty much dominant for a long time. So to turn around and say we're all to blame, that's not true. Uh, the, the Catholic Church uh, absolutely wielded the big stick when it came to matters of moral issue. And he turned around now for me, Hill Martin. And the other thing, Judas, I suppose I'm trying to say as well here, the, church, uh, the state has taken its time on this redress. It's going on for 10, 12 years. I think they're hoping most of these people will die so the bill will be smaller. They've sounds familiar, Pat. Uh, sounds uh, familiar. You know, uh, yeah. And Jude, it's, it's unbelievably cruel that they're, these people are now getting older and older. In fact, they're dropping off at a fair old rate at this stage. Mm -hmm. Like when you're talking, uh, the original thing, I think, started about 1930 or 1928 and went on to 1998. Like, you know, that's, what's that, 70 years, is it? I'm yeah. never, uh, 60 yeah. years. So, uh, like, Jude, mark it out for yourself. Uh, um, there can't be that many left now. That's, What's your opinion, I, 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 I'd agree with much of what you said, Pat, indeed. It's a terrible, terrible thing. There's an awful lot of, I suppose, unnecessary suffering has been inflicted on people and uh, sort of, it has ruined lives, there's no doubt about it. However, there's a couple of things uh, that I would I haven't been fed into the discussion of it, uh, either by yourself or other people so far. The first of these is the invisible impregnator. That is to yeah. say, the guy who got the girl pregnant. Yeah. Nobody's ever mentioned him. No, nope. never. Now he bears responsibility. Now I I know that was the style of the time. You get a girl up the duff, you get the hell yeah. out of there. And yeah. there's that famous. Uh, there's a guy. I remember hearing a guy at a documentary about Bally James Duff, sing, yeah. a local singing, "Come back, Paddy Riley, to Bally James Duff." James Duff. Sure, she wasn't pregnant at all. Pregnant at all. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Uh, I think that's a serious omission, and I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm surprised that feminists, particularly or people generally, for that matter, yeah. haven't said this was one of the parties involved in this, and he has walked away in every instance, and uh, we haven't even referred to him. I think um, 
I think, Pat, I would um, maybe emphasize the sort of uh, zeitgeist or the, the attitudes of the time, the society, maybe a bit more than yourself. Um, you see, I, I think, for example, in England at the time, you know, if, we, if we take my, my, my memories of, the, say, the early 50s, mid 50s, yeah. which is about the middle of that whole period you talked about. Yeah. Uh, I remember reading uh, books, certainly works of fiction, and for a girl to get pregnant, even though it was essentially, as we're always told, a pagan country, not a yeah. religious country, but for a girl to get pregnant was uh, a source of embarrassment, at least, and sometimes shame among yeah. people who had no religious affiliation, and no yeah. noticeable, even in working yeah. class areas of, of England. Uh, yeah. It was, to some extent, something at least embarrassing, if not shameful. Yeah. Um, so uh, again, while the church here certainly played a huge role, uh, mm. it wasn't exclusively the church that set that. I think it was in part, at least the attitude at the time, both here in Ireland and in England. Yeah. Um, the other thing is the young women's families. I, I think about them, you know, they must have yeah. agreed to this, uh, yeah. allowing the girls to go in. And they probably agreed because there was nowhere else for the girl to go. No. Um, I just, I'd like to have seen that explored a bit more. Did they do it with a heavy heart? Did they do it with a sense of relief to get her to hell out of the house? Or, you know, what was it? And was there any alternative to the girl having to go into these? I, do, I, do, I don't disagree with it, but I don't agree with it either. You know, there's a <laughs> sort of thing like a proportionality and uh I don't think it was half as bad in England as it was here. No, probably not. I, That's oh, true. Oh, oh, I, I, I accept your point. I uh, accept that point. I, I there, was, there, was one, there was one girl on, um, I just read about it, I didn't see, I hear it, on the Joe Duffy show, which is the, sort of the, the confessional radio show uh, uh, here and there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think she was called Mary Fitzgerald and she was raped when she was 13. Ah, yeah. Now, uh, uh, now the, uh, the family were willing to sort of try, she was only 13 and she was going to give birth in the local hospital. The parish priest intervened, or the local priest, as far as no intervened, to prevent that or doing that. Now, she was on Joe Duffy during the weekend. She said the fact that the priest had the power to do that showed the dominant force in Irish life. Now, Jude, there are those, and uh, the, so I heard someone refer to them as the Holy Joes are in total denial that the, you know, the church did so much great work and that it's, what's happening now is this condemnation of the church is totally unfair. It's a very simple rule. When the church does good, it should get every credit and every pat mm -hmm. on the back for it. And, it, and it, they did definitely do great work. Yeah. But see, when they do things wrong, oh, it's I, equally I, sure, you know, this, yeah. this hypocrisy that, you know, you sort of, you turn your face and let on, it doesn't happen. But yeah. anyway, the bottom line is that we girl was forced to give up her child who was adopted. And now, Jude, I'm not 100% certain, but I think she was on TV and she's, I think it's the same woman, not 100% certain, but she tried to, you know, in her life to get and touch, I think it was a son she had, and he didn't want to know. So there's a woman who will go to her grave, you know, with a heavy heart and a big oh, burden to carry. Yeah, yeah. it's, I mean, I don't mean any insult to, to the woman at all, but it's the only analogy I can think of. I mean, the loss of the child after the child was born and taken yeah. away, the pain of that must have been very, just instinctive and very deep rooted. Yeah. When I was a kid, I mean, as I say, I hope this comparison isn't taken in the wrong way. But when I was a kid, we'd got cattle and they'd very often have a, ca a cow having a calf. Yeah. And then they would take the calf away. Jeez, yeah. the bawling of that cow. You know, yeah. I can still hear yeah. it. The, yeah. That sense of, we really was it's a loss of yeah. misery. It's instinct. It's, in it's, in it's a maternal very, instinct. Very profound, yeah. very profound. And, and it's, I, don't, I don't know where to start. I really don't know where to uh, start. Jude, uh, Jude, one other thing, just, uh, just uh, you, could, you just said someone there as well. Jude, 9,000 kids died and babies died and uh, way, above what, uh, way above what happened out in, nor we'll call it normal society. Uh, uh, you know, and what a 15% mortality rate amongst newborn babies. Was that, Jude, why uh, was that, Pat? Tell me why it was uh, that. Jude, I, Jude I, I'm, I'm, don't, I'm not even sure, but they said it in, um, on drive time. There was one woman on, uh, she, she uh, was read by an actor. She said when it was due to give birth, the midwife, now they didn't say whether the midwife was a nun, but I presumed it was, when she uh, was about to give birth, they, as he said, cut her down there and refused to give her any uh, pain-killing medication. She says, you're now paying for your sins. Now, Jude, 
was that sort of an attitude, you know, and lack of care, and uh, you know, the, uh, they were considered the sluts and everything else, the attitude and so on. You yeah. know, uh, I don't. Yeah. There's also that thing. I don't think they were very well looked after. They the, 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 they weren't fed very well. There was a one woman, and she said she saw her child was sick, was sick, and she said to the nun, you know, anyway, it took a fortnight before the child was seen by a doctor, and the child died. You know, that question of, of the higher rate of mortality, that, that's sort of, that's scary. And, and yeah. then the burial of the children, where, where, was there an effort to bury them and hide the fact that they had died or? Yeah, well, Jude, Jude, the other thing as well, uh, this thing about- Were they not buried, sorry Pat, were they not buried in some sort of graveyard? Because I, I seem to have seen a thing about talking about sewers or-, or Yeah, yeah, that, uh, you're, you're ahead of me. That's exactly where I was going. In Chum. The child, uh, they, they said the children were buried in a sewage area. Now, from by all accounts, it was a disused septic tank. Now, really, you know, Jude, that, yeah, that's that's what it seems to be. I know, find uh, I, 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 I mean, I, I don't know, and it's, I suppose anything is possible. Jude, right, Jude, stop seems me there for a second. He said the, the, the report said they were buried in a sewage area. Now, whether it was a septic tank, and it seems it was a septic tank or a disused septic tank, but it was a sewage area. Oh, Jesus, that's terrible. that's not that up, really that's is, not up for a question. Yeah. That really is ghastly. Uh, yeah. If if in fact they were buried in a septic tank, it seems appalling. I, I can't I can't believe it. I, well, it must be true. And um, one other thing I'll say, Pat, because I think we could go on with this for quite a bit. Yeah. It seems to me uh, that this is it was a terrible scandal. It was a terrible scandal. An awful lot of pain. An awful lot of people's lives ruined. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the only thing I would say, well, I'll say two things. One is, do you see the way they had kids that went off to Australia and Canada and places? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think that was terrible too, because I mean, they, they were going and they'd never be seen again. Uh, yeah. But you need to put that in the context of seeing um, those places as places where people could give a, have a fresh start or yeah. a place of opportunity. There was that element in society at the time, you know, the 10 pound ticket that would yeah. take you to a wonderful sunlit land and so on. And uh, uh. um, the, the other thing is this, I agree that the church really failed people. And that, you know, you know my views about yeah. the way the church emphasized the only sin was sexual sin, you know, yeah. and that was the thing that would send you to hell, etc. Mm. So they failed people, of course they did, but they failed them in lots of other ways. And, for example, when somebody died, they would read aloud the offerings, you know. Yeah. Joe, well, Joe I'm blogs, a, I, I, shillings. Cut, exactly. I, I got the tail end of that as a wee bit. Oh, that, 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 that was appalling. And people were embarrassed, you know. Poor uh, people were uh, embarrassed that they couldn't put up as much as the big bloody solicitor or whatever. Uh, uh, um, uh. There was, well, we both maybe experienced this. There was the whole system of corporal punishment. They talk about the girls being treated harshly. Yeah. Now, I'm sure I'm, I don't know, but I guess they'd be treated at least as harshly as we were, or probably more. But yeah. there was a whole system of corporal punishment, both in yeah. ordinary schools and at home. Yeah. And that was accepted. Now, that wasn't the church forcing people to do it. Yeah. People thought it was the right thing to do. And we used yeah. to laugh at the Yanks who would talk to their children. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, well, yeah, think then, about well, it. Yeah. Um, uh, the other thing is, uh, again, this is just my. I suppose my my sort of nationalistic slash republican view of things. Uh, what what has there ever been any question about the southern state and what it did in abandoning the people of the north to fifty years of discrimination and sectarianism and uh, poverty and ultimately decades of violence? You know, the the, the south gets a the south, southern government the so gets a free pass on that. My fear Absolutely. is that while this was an appalling, ghastly scandal, like many of the things that we lament from the past that were, were really, really bad, yeah. there's a tie into sex in some way. What do you mean by that? Well, the, the, the girls were in the homes because they were made pregnant outside yeah. marriage. So it was a sex yeah. was involved there. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. And out of that came all that suffering and so on. Yeah. Uh, if you take something like same-sex marriage, right? Yeah. Again, people say, oh, of course you have to have same-sex marriage. And I would tend, tend to agree, to be honest with you. But again, it's there's a sexual element. What I'm saying is uh, 
there is an agenda which looks after things that involve sex yeah. to a greater extent than things that don't. And I'm wondering why that is. Because the things that don't, I mean, poverty, poverty ruined lives, blocked yeah. opportunities. Yeah. Things like 11 plus stopped mm -hmm. guys in their tracks at the age of 11 who otherwise might have been able to do all sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, but th those things don't get the same kind of um, headline as do yeah. do those things which were uh, connected with sex. Imagine. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jude, you know the, know the famous one about uh, um, the, the guy going to the priest and, uh, and he's, anyway, he, he'd been selling dodgy cars. And uh, he went to confession. He said, um, and he said, Father did this. And, and Father, uh, the, uh, the priest turned, and Johnny, what about the dodgy cars you're selling? He says, Father, I'm here to tell you my sons not to discuss me business. You know? <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, know? And, exactly. You know, uh, exactly. Yeah, and like, there was that sort of attitude, you know, like it's the sons of the flesh. You can do whatever the hell else you like. Well, you see, the, the, the irony of this is that the church uh, and the, the homes ruined those young people's lives in the name of sexual purity. Absolutely. Right? And here uh, we are, uh, again, you know, post-Christian or post-Catholic Ireland is settling on things that were connected with sex as yeah. being things but we you, do you think now, do, you, do you not think now that the Republic of Ireland, particularly the Republic of Ireland, but Ireland has now rejected the Catholic Church to yeah. an extent that we have almost gone the other way. Exactly. Anything, exactly. The, anything but, the Catholic but, but, Church is now for, we're against. Where uh, you know the Catholic Church is against abortion, we have vote for it. They're against contraception, we vote for it. They're against same-sex marriage, we vote for it. Maybe that's it. People, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm yeah. just struck with that common co a common thread of sexuality. Yeah. Things somehow linked with sex, and yet yeah. they don't get. People don't get hot and bothered about, uh, as I say, corporal punishment, uh, shaming people in terms of. Well, I don't know about that, there, Jude. In case when you when you, you read the reports about uh, having on in the industrial schools and the falling uh, uh, punishments and all the rest, there's a fair old outcry about that too. Well, I'll tell you something, Pat. There was some really vicious uh, physical punishment of boys in St. Columns. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, I've, I've never seen anybody. Uh, Making any kind of fuss about it. I'm sure they yeah, I, I, I remember being at St. Eunan's and I remember one priest turning around. I'll not even, he's dead, it doesn't matter, but I'll not even name him. And basically turned around and said to us, you know, you better, guys better remember that when you leave here and looking for a job, we'll decide whether you get that job or not. Basically, oh, yeah. he was threatening oh, yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah. yeah. I remember, I, I, I'm, I'm told that I wasn't in that position, but uh, I'm told that in the, in the early 60s, to get a teaching job in the in Derry Diocese, and certainly in a Catholic school, you had to go and see the bishop yourself, essentially yep. kiss the, the bishop's ring. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't get a decent job. I, I, well, there's two incidents you just mentioned. Someone there, I remember a wee girl that we knew what didn't live too far from us growing up. Uh, to get a job in a Catholic school, uh, she was warned to be seen to go to mass every Sunday, particularly, but to be I'd be a, a communicant. Uh, to go for Holy Communion and to be seen to be going up for about six months beforehand. <laughs> Secondly, there was a guy I knew who went on to the priesthood for a while, very good degree, and as far as I remember, he had the immigrant, couldn't get a job because he'd been gone for the priesthood and left Maynooth. So what do you say? Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's, it's so sort of horrible, that whole mother and uh, baby Holmes thing, that there's a tendency for me to pu just pull away from it, not even think about it. Um, yeah. Especially I think about high mortality. I, I would like to see people clarify things like that. I mean, rather than say these p kids were buried in a, an area where there was a sewage works or whatever, yeah. to say, show us exactly where they were buried. And if that yeah. was happening, I mean, that, that's ghastly. But, but, can, you, can you imagine? You, you look how frustrated you are. Can you imagine being a survivor of that? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, if you, I was listening uh, some years back to a young fellow telling the story of his mother, and he broke down, a young fellow, he was in his 60s, uh, uh, and was on with, I think, Marion Finucane, who's now dead, on a Saturday morning in RT as I was driving along. The man broke down in the middle of his interview, and I mean, broke down seriously, emotionally. Like, dude. What sort of trauma are these people carrying around? And at night, you know, I presume there's gremlins coming in their brains about where's my child buried and yeah. what about yeah. my mother and, you know, and all the rest. And, you, well, and, and, and the government is dragging it out and dragging uh, it out and dragging uh, it out. Uh, well, politicians are always, well, 
Certainly, that our present, the precise present government uh, will be looking after themselves and be concerned for votes and so on. Um, a final question, or not a question, but just an observation. You see the way I compared the, the sort of physical punishment that, and very severe physical punishments yeah. in some cases that we got when we were at school mm. and said, you know, you don't hear people outcry about that, but they'll talk about these girls being treated roughly, and I'm sure they were even yeah. more roughly yeah. than we were. Um, now, what was the point I wanted to make about yeah. that? Um, you were comparing the two? Or... Yeah. But, uh, Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Go I got it now, Pat. Uh, yeah. I, for years and years and years, I really harbored a terrific grudge against teachers, particularly Absolutely. as happens Irish teachers, but yeah. teachers who beat me up, essentially, big, yeah. big, big men thumping yeah. me around the face and blathering the bloody hands off me. Yeah. And I, yeah. I held a real grudge against those people. I used to say, that bastard. Yeah. And eventually I got to the point where I, thought, I said, well, you know, they might have been bastards, but actually they were victims the same as I was a victim. They yeah. were in a system where they saw that was the way they were supposed to act. That was the way yeah. you were to act as a teacher. Yeah. You had to keep these guys in line, etc., cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You were part yeah. of a system. So yeah. I'm more forgiving of them now than it would have been in the past. In fact, I'd forgive them completely because I think they're part Speak of for yourself. a system. Speak Part of a system. No, I think they're yeah. part of a system. And they, yeah. they couldn't help themselves. They couldn't imagine anything else. And I'm yeah. wondering if you take these nuns that ran these Magdalene, well, not Magdalene laundries, but these... Yeah, but they, yeah, I know what you get that, yeah. Did they, did, did they think that they were doing wrong and evil or did they see themselves as part of a necessary... Uh, you hold on. You know someone that... Uh, or uh, what? Uh, uh, right here, uh, um, He's Bishop Bailey. Well, I got into a discussion or an argument or a debate, whatever you want to call it, with Bishop Bailey one day. And he came out of that line, and you have to come out. They were victims of their time and all the rest. Jude, decency, compassion, and humanity didn't come on un come under fashion in you know, 1985 or 1990. It should have been there in the 1920s and 30s. Uh, and, you know, no, nah, Jude, I don't buy that. You know, well, kindness and uh, you know, there were you know, uh, there were a certain number of people. They didn't give a monkey's ass about uh, some people, and they were just in, in a cruelty. And Jude, I I really do ask a question. Do see some people who go go into nuns and shut themselves off from society and all? Like I sort of wonder what sort of mentality that has, and you no, know, and what sort of humanity there is there, and like. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't, like, you see, that was I'm a just, system too, Pat. That 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 fitted into a system within the Catholic Church where people renounced the world, the flesh, and the devil. Yeah, they renounced the world as a place of you know a valley of tears and all the rest of it, and they yeah. would give their lives to God inside the confines of a convent. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, we're getting off the topic here, but I, I, in my I, view, I, being for a woman to spend her life in a convent with yeah. other women. None yeah. of them married, none of them with children, uh, mm. no, no uh, contact with anybody else really, only their, their, their sisters or their, whatever you call them, you know, the other, yeah. their fellow nuns. Yeah. And that must have been appallingly hard. You know, yeah. guys when they're together, yeah. uh, this sounds sexist now, but I think this is true. Guys when they're together can be, they can irk each other and you can see fights breaking out and I know that yeah. from St. Columns. But yeah. uh, women, uh, I think for some of them it must have been very, very hard, and yeah. it must have led to all sorts of enmities and spite and God mm. knows what. It was a terrible way to, for people to live their lives, I think. Absolutely, and yeah. nuns don't do that anymore, and I think that's yeah. a bloody good thing too. Absolutely. Anyway, anyway, yeah. it's a, yeah. we'll draw a veil over that yeah. really ghastly damn thing. There's so many angles to it, but I suppose in the end, all you can see is. It was a scandal, and uh, they should do whatever is the right thing to do, and then, you know, uh, get, stop bring talking about it. Us. Exactly. Okay. Second on the list is, guess who? Donald Trump. Donald <laughs> Trump, uh, who in a week's time will no longer be the president of the United States. Yeah. Uh, do you think that um, we have seen the last of Donald J. Trump? No, Jude, and I, I actually, I think he's left uh, a serious legacy behind him. And uh, it's a dangerous one. The, the, what is there's 20,000 National Guard in uh, Washington as we speak. 
Uh, there are fears more, of, more than uh, Pat, more than there are more soldiers in Washington than there is in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, yeah, I'm yeah, combined. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they 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 are now following up a lot of stuff on Twitter. Jude and CNN this morning uh, during that Capitol building, they zeroed in. There was a group of guys walking and sort of military gear up one after the other. It's the first time I've seen it. The, 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 the so-called red was a lot more organized than many people think. And Jude, they, they, they charged some guy this morning. I think it might have been the guy with the, the, the horns and the, the bear. Uh, the bear uh, David Crockett. Uh, David Crockett. I think it might have been. I'm not 100% certain. And the, the attorney, the prosecuting attorney says there was planned to kill and assassinate. I know uh, I heard this morning that one of the guys arrested was a banker. He's 53. So respectable. He's committed suicide because his life's over. You know, so there's a lot going on there, Jude. And it's very, very serious. Jude. But, Jude, I was watching, I've become addicted to CNN. I was sitting watching CNN the other night during the impeachment thing. Was the reception I sat, good, Pat? Was the uh, reception very good. good? Uh, very good, yeah. Well, the reception yeah. was tough. All day yesterday, we could not get CNN. Uh, I was, I was very. Said good, it was a transmission it, failure or something. No, anyway, was, uh, no, but anyway, the, uh, the I couldn't believe Jude, the total dishonesty and moral cowardice of the Republican Party. They were there. There were some not only defending Trump but accusing others. And do you ever hear the term false equivalency? There were some trying to say that the Reds, the Black Life Reds, were were the same as what happened in Washington. Jude, the Black Life, Life Matter Reds were after a, a policeman sat in somebody's in the neck and for eight minutes until he died. And it's the Black Lives, the people of colour who came out and read it and protested, uh, had no recourse to uh, you, um, Donald Trump sent a group of thugs uh, organised by the President of the United States to compare one with the other. And they were trying to do this equivalency during the whole, that the, 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 the Democrats hadn't condemned the... Uh, the BLM uh, protest. So why are the big fuss about Donald Trump as if the two were the same? It's, a call, it's called the politics of distraction. Uh, uh, you know, raise a false hair and send it flying off and say, follow that. Uh, and yeah. I, I think, you know, the, the reporting of it is based, uh, they say that these people, all these Republicans, now there was only 10 of them that actually voted with the notion yeah. of impeachment in the House of Representatives. Yeah. And yeah. there's going to be even fewer up in the Senate. But, yeah. uh, those people who say, well, we're not voting for it because we believe the um, election was stolen from yeah. Donald Trump. That's a popular idea. Yeah. Why haven't reporters said to guys, what is your evidence? You know, have, you know, I, 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 you do this I, in a kind I, of a half-assed way. I, you should I, pin a guy, anybody who comes on and says that they believe that this was the election wasn't correctly uh, conducted, give us your evidence and they should do that again and again and again because otherwise yeah. people will assume oh there's something Joe, something uh, Joe, as far as i think you quoted it the last day I, I think it was georgia the votes were basically counted three times and mm. certified three times mm. jesus i like how, how much evidence they need and the, the uh, trump's own uh, um election sir the guy who resigned or i think trump might have fired him said it was the most secure election in american history because of uh, Trump started about six months out saying they, they were going to steal the election. He was setting it up for failure because uh, he knew that if he failed, that it would have to be somebody else's. So anyway, they, they watched every vote. Uh, what is the, um, I think in Georgia, the guy said there was 12 video cameras on, on, on them counting. They uh, checked the machines and electoral machines. And, all there, and uh, by the way, the, the company that makes the electoral machines, uh, as far as I know, they're suing Rudy Giuliani and a couple others for claims that the machines um, <laughs> were, 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 were rigged. <laughs> well, they'll have to join the queue because quite a few other people are ready to sue Giuliani as well. Um, the, the the thing that's sort of well what, what point one point first of all about that thing about the votes being being a fake fake election yeah the point is the people uh, on the democratic side it's not their job to prove that the election was genuine yeah. it's the job of the people who claim it's fake yeah to produce evidence that it was fake it was fake and they it's haven't like, produced it's like a single saying, thing it's like me saying uh, you're a bigamist pat Right. You know, and you've got to defend yourself and prove you're not. No, you no. don't. I have yeah. to prove you're a bigamist if I'm going to call yeah. you one. Yeah, so the absolutely. same thing with this bloody uh, fake election. They have got to prove. And they should, I don't know what reporters are doing that they don't say, 
we get a charge. Where's the where's your evidence for this? Yeah, and they don't do that. They just give them a free pass, or even say to Democrats, "Oh, but prove that the thing was okay." No, in fairness, you've been on fairly CNN because there's a couple of uh, very very good people on CNN who have said to uh, um, you know to the uh, Republicans, "Look, you've had numerous court attempts. You have had uh, uh, six about uh, since November. Yeah, yeah, not one bit of evidence. I've you know gone produce your evidence. Now, I've heard them actually saying that." Well, I have two, but I think you can, it's a, way, a question of how much ev- uh, emphasis you put on this. Yeah. When you say things, what's your claim that it's a fake, fake election? You know that there was fraud. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, where yeah. is the evidence for that? And keep on that topic. Simply yeah. that, nothing else. Don't say yeah. that there was courts or anything. Else. Say where's your evidence? Yeah, uh, they, they won't be able to produce it. Uh, Jude, uh, we're getting back to the main point. The Republican Party, I think. I, I, I was sitting watching it, Jude, guys, uh, on CNN, and let me repeat that. And, you know, they were alter, alternating between, uh, I know the American system, I, I concede or cede 30 seconds to the the, the gentlewoman from um, oh, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. That was very interesting, that. Uh, it was very interesting. I've never seen it done like that before. But anyway, up would come a Democrat, and it'd be maybe Hispanic, black, white, uh, and then two months later, the same, you know, the same pattern. And the number of black people uh, was unbelievable in Democrat. Jude, there, I think there was one Hispanic and the whole Republican. Uh, they were all white male. And uh, I'd say at most there was about three women uh, and the Republican speakers. You know, so the Republicans are an old white man party. Sounds a bit like um, the DUP to me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, But by the way, Jude, I, I really believe this whole Trump thing is purely about race, a really genuinely, uh, uh, and when you watch the Trump rallies, it's, dude, it's not about policies, it's I not know. about how, uh, what an obnoxious gobshed he is, yeah. it's white people there coming along, and oh. I, I'd like, remember the famous one allegedly said about Bill Clinton when he talked about Obama, he said to somebody at the White House reception, do you realize 30 years ago this guy would have been serving us coffee? Yeah. Now, there's two ways of looking at that, either mm-hmm. A, he meant that it's, you know, an insult, Pejoratively, or B, you were saying, isn't it brilliant that here yeah. this man's present? But, yeah, that, yeah, but yeah, apparently yeah. it was a but remark he made. There is another thing, though, besides the white whiteness of these guys uh, and the element of race that obviously is in it, there's also the, uh, the element of poverty. Yeah. Those, a lot of those guys are poor. That's, yeah. that's the long and short of it. There are not too many of them are, apart from Trump, of course, who's a, a millionaire, or at least yeah. he's a millionaire in debt. But by and large, you could tell those were working class people. Uh, uh, so I think there was a seam of poverty running through most of the people who were uh, defecating all over the Capitol building uh, last week, as well uh, as this thing of race and make sure there are uh, no black faces are on, on, among them. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, are we finished, Evan? Because we're uh, really we'll on, 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 on an awful length here today. Uh, um, third one, social media. Social media. You you have a theory that something should be done about it. Absolutely, Jude. You know, see, and uh, I think there's a, there was a fairness trap, and I can't remember the name of it in, uh, in America. It was Ronald Reagan. Uh, sort of, um, you didn't have to balance a report. No way, NBC uh, and ABC yeah, yeah. years ago. Then along comes Fox News and CNN, and they don't have to balance it. They, they can stick to an agenda. Jude, I can say anything about you on uh, social media, and there's very little comeback. The law, uh, if I said it in a newspaper, I would be sued to high heaven. You, uh, if I said Jude um, uh, Collins is a bigot, and such and such and such, I would have a solicitor's letter in the morning saying, Pat, uh, you've just uh, labeled my client. You've, you know, and, uh, you, know you, you should see some of the letters I see. It. It's, it's the meanest standing in the community, and uh, you know we will be seeking compensation. I have seen things, Jude, on social media that would frighten that make me toe score because I think if anybody come after that there that person for that comment you know they would get sued to him social media no I can say anything they all, but the, that's one part of it too. the other thing is there's a, you know if I like a certain thing there's the, uh, algorithms I'll keep feeding me my own prejudice and that dude see these people who vote Trump they have bought into the QAnon theory about conspiracy that there's a deep state there that Hillary Clinton is running a pedophile ring that uh, I could keep going. That uh, Donald Trump, as he uh, 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 he's trying to save the world for, and bring back old style Christianity. And there was one guy I even heard this morning, CNN. Jesus will save us, you know, in, in the middle of the riot. How's that going? 
where do these people and dude, that, that is very worrying and there's no rules so mm -hmm. somewhere well, now i think they need it they're going to need it see, see jude this um i'm going to finish this but the internet is global but there are no global rules mm. Well, I, I, I would very mildly beg to differ a little bit on that about Facebook and Twitter, because uh, I speak from personal experience. There are people who have made legal threats against me for what I've said or what I've, yeah. even what I've retweeted. Yeah. Uh, now, they may not have had a leg to stand on, but their yeah. solicitors didn't seem to think so. And I had yeah. to tell you, frankly, it scared the life out of me. So yeah. I, I rapidly apologized and took down whatever it was. Yeah. So there seems to be, the, the police too will if you talk to policemen they'll say there's such a thing as um so the, abu the abuse of social media they claim yeah. they would claim that's a, a, a an offense and an indictable offense yeah. now whether yeah. it is or not i don't know but i think there's yeah. some rules but i take a point it's more like the wild west than is the yeah. case with newspapers and so on yeah. i think that for a start what they should do and if you talk about not facebook but twitter where everybody, including myself, has got a handle. They've got a name, yeah. an anonymous name, yeah. you know, yeah. all, sorts of, all sorts of names. Yeah. Uh, but get rid of those, or at least have, if they're using a pen name or a pseudonym, give uh, the readers of their, of their posts or their tweets a link where they can check what the guy's real name is, what the uh -huh. person's real name is. It's just this uh -huh. wild anonymity, because anonymity breeds outrageous statements. Yeah. People will say things. If you remember that wonderful bloody book, Lord of the Flies. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a bit in it where the guy puts on a mask, and he's he's somehow liberated. He can do or say anything because yeah. he's got the mask. And you see that yeah. uh, in, in ways. You see that with uh, people who wear uniform. But uh, the point yeah. I'm making is because these guys have the mask of anonymity, they say the most bloody outrageous things. I think, yeah. for example. Facebook, where you have to usually say who you are, uh, isn't as nearly as abusive as Twitter, where you don't no. have to say who you are. So no. I think there's an obvious rule you could bring in. If you're going to yeah. be on Twitter, give your name. Yeah. No, J J no, I, don't, I don't want to take, uh, you know, like, let's be honest. Uh, uh, tr the mainstream media in, in the past hasn't been exactly forced for good. Murdoch's papers have been absolutely unbelievably, uh, you know, uh, what would you say, detrimental to good yeah. order. But yeah. uh, but there's a happy medium or middle ground where social media needs some kind of regulation because what's happening in America is proof. Most of that is driven by social media. Well, that's true, but let's not let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater, so to speak, to coin a, <laughs> an original uh, metaphor. Uh, it does Twitter, for example, or Facebook does encourage discussion of issues, very often yeah. political issues, and I think that's good in yeah. itself. It's good that people should be interested in politics, should be willing to discuss politics, who you know will pursue things and weigh up things and make a judgment on them. I think that's good because yeah. there's an awful lot of population, you know, sits at home and doesn't bother their arse uh, yeah. having anything to do with politics. As a result, many cases rogues rule the roost. Yeah. Uh, so I think that a, a Twitter, for example, could be a force for good or Facebook or whatever. But it's often just, in my experience of it, it's often just a question of winning. People don't discuss issues. Yeah. They sort of battle each other. Yeah. I've never seen a, a Twitter discussion where a guy says, oh, yeah, that's a fair point. Um, yeah, maybe you're right. Uh, yeah, you're probably yeah. right. I'm, I'm, no, yeah. I missed the point there. Yeah. You never back down. You know, it's, a, no. it's like jousting, you know. Yeah, like nights on, on yeah, actually, I've seen it where people where people are so clearly wrong and that they're actually sort of an admirer, but uh, but they still keep uh, trying to argue a point that you just know where a month like this is insane, but you know, but mm -hmm. so that's social media. Well, my last point about, about Twitter, for example, is um, or Facebook for that matter, it puts people in touch with each other. Uh, now, that can be for better or worse, for example. I know when I've occasionally done a, a piece and put it up on Facebook and I get a response from people and I find out what yeah. they're thinking. And a lot of the time they're saying, you know, that's what I was thinking too. Uh, so yeah. I, I find that very encouraging that you realize that there's not just you that's pissed off of this or not just you that's enthusiastic. Uh, this, you, you, that's, that's the good side of social media. Uh, that's the, the, is, the, the, uh, the, yeah, the democratization. Exactly. Jude, you're, it's, it's very good. It's democratized a lot of society. That's that's a good point. It's when you know the without the rules, 
and the abuse. And some of Judas really, really says, and the point you made earlier on is very true. Jude, when you can ha hide behind a, a, a nom de plume or a pseudonym or whatever, whatever, a handle, whatever, and you can come out with the most vicious abuse mm -hmm. and so on, like some of the, the, the stuff in America now, you know, uh, about uh, um, even a Michelle Obama, she was compared to a nape and all that, by a whole lot of people. So that's, that's, there should be laws against stuff like that. Well, the thing I was saying about it being positive, that you're encouraged because you thought you were the only one who felt this, and you're, yeah. you're really heartened when you find other people feel the same way. Yeah. The trouble is that the other side of that same coin is, yeah. I'm right because I'm a Trump supporter and I look at all the yeah. people in the world, apparently, on Twitter, yeah. agree with yeah. me. So the yeah. echo chamber thing, in other words, the bad stuff gets There has to be. You know that echo chamber, the algorithms, where you get fed, if they find out that you're anti-Trump or pro-Trump, you keep getting fed the same stuff and all the rest. There should be that. There should be a reverse algorithm. See, when you are pro-Trump, you should get stuff that sort of says, here, look at this. Okay, Pat, I'm going to test you that we'll have to stop now because we we're, uh, we're way for over time. We're uh, going for a bloody hour and we're supposed I to stop you, after 20 minutes. <laughs> right. Uh, one, one question. If you could abolish Twitter and Facebook, social media generally, tomorrow, would you? No. No, neither would I, you see. So we yeah. believe that all things considered, they are forces for good or if yeah. they're bad at the moment, we can reform them. So there you are. Uh, okay. Yeah. All Dr. social Collins. media is potentially good. Yes. I hope, our, I hope both our viewers are aware of that fact. <laughs> okay, Pat. We've just got, we've just gone on for an hour. We've probably lost both of them anyway. <laughs> uh, good luck, Jim. Nobody will see this part. <laughs> <laughs>